Hey guys, welcome to the US Team and Mia Fitting Studio here. Uh, this is a little bit slice of heaven for most golfers out there, but essentially what we do in here is collect data uh, for prototype shafts and shafts that we currently use for tour players, but also for recreational golfers. We have some come in and do some fittings. Um, as you can see, we have a lot of space here, and that's really by design. Uh, it's easier for most amateurs when they get fit indoors, they're kind of, they feel claustrophobic. So that's one of the big feedback we got when we did our original studio was to make it a little bigger, more space. So you see here, a lot of space. We use GC Quad. We also use TrackMan, uh, mainly GC Quad for indoors, just for the purpose of uh, collecting data. It's a little bit more accurate in terms of getting the numbers that we're looking for over and over and over again. Uh, so if, if you look around here, you know, we have a ton of stuff for irons, woods, uh, shafts, uh, and then kind of an area for people to relax, TV and stuff like that. So this is our fitting studio, and then we'll give you guys a tour of the facility uh, from the engineering standpoint, uh, what we do to measure shafts, and then we show you how we make the golf shafts, and then we show you how we finish the golf shafts. Hey guys, come along. Uh, we're, now we're gonna go into the engineering build area. Uh, we have a little build area here just for the purposes of just really prototype testing and then also building for uh, some golfers out there. But for the most part, it's really prototype building. Not a big build for us because it's not our focus, but we need something here. Um, this is where we're really, the engineers, when they develop the, the shaft, we need to test the data in terms of the numbers, whether it's the CPM, the butt stiffness, the mid stiffness, tip stiffness, whether it's HST, De La Cruz model, or the torque that we come in here and validate what we see on the, the simulation. Um, so the first thing, you know, typically we kind of go in order. Um, we use, you know, pretty much everyone has some, some type of CPM machine, but for the purposes of us, you know, our data, we use a, a, a 210 gram weight, seven inch clamp to get the, the numbers that you see on our web, published on our website. Uh, and then if you move along, uh, we measure the tip stiffness, uh, butt stiffness with our De La Cruz. And then we have a proprietary machine that actually measures the mid-flex of the woods and irons as well, that we have the numbers that is relevant to us in terms of how we measure it. And then industry-wise too, uh, everyone has this machine, just HSD, uh, measures the tip and butt, uh, has a weight that gives us an idea of how stiff the, the each section is. We typically measure in three-inch increments on the tip and the butt side as well. Just to show you guys real quick, I mean, you look at, um, this is the current Diata shaft, but just measuring real quick the, the tip stiffness here, um, just clamps it in here. Like I said, we can measure every three inches of shafts. Typically we do that. So we get an idea of how stiff the shaft is, uh, zeroed out, but then put the sensor on uh, and then just lower the weight and it spins and then tells us how far that's gonna bend. Uh, so you can see this is roughly 112. We do this a couple of times to validate the numbers, but roughly 110 millimeters. So that tells us how stiff the tip is. Uh, typically, the, uh, the lower the number, the stiffer it is. The higher the number, the softer it is. The higher number, actually, the weight's going down further. So a little bit softer overall. Another goal of, of, of shaft is durability. This is another concern, uh, mainly for you know our business with the OEM partners, our business with the tour players and stuff like that. So we have a lot of different machines to test how we break the, the golf shaft. And this is really like a three-point bend machine that a lot of these guys have too as well. So again, the, the goal there is really to torture the shaft, to break it, to get it to the breaking point, to make sure that before we actually get to player testing that it, it, it stands up to the, the rigors of, of the uh, uh, durability that we need. Uh, so that's the engineering room. Uh, next place we want to show you guys really just real quick is going to be the rolling process where we roll the golf shaft uh, and, and really how that's that goes about doing. 
actually, before I, sh before I show you that, uh, the first thing I want to show you guys, we get the materials. Um, so, uh, as you know, like uh, carbon fibers and uh, resin, stuff like that, it, it requires it to be kind of cool. Otherwise, if you have it in hot humid weather, the resin system is going to really delaminate. You're going to have issues with golf shafts if you start making it with that. So, first thing we do is actually come in here and show you guys. Again, all shaft manufacturers, quality shaft manufacturers will have a facility like this where they're focused on getting the best materials from different uh, suppliers. And all the companies have this. So it's nothing unique here. It's just want to show you guys. The, the technicians will grab the materials that they need, come in here, get the materials, and then go to the rolling table and cut accordingly. All this stuff that you're seeing right here is actually uh, vaulting poles. So we, uh, we specialize in making carbon tubes. So anything we, that, that is a tube structure, we can make like arrows, vaulting poles, poo cues, and stuff like that. So as you can see here, uh, this is where really how it starts is the mandrel. So the engineer will come up with a design. This per se is not a golf shaft. But if you look at it, it's just a, a basic parallel tube here. Uh, so again, making more than golf shafts, but essentially it's the same concept. We have a, a steel mandrel that dictates how stiff the shaft will be in terms of uh, from butt, mid, and tip. So that will dictate, you know, whether it's an R flex, S flex, and really material how we roll the shaft. Uh, so most golf shafts are going to be relatively tapered, uh, whereas some golf shafts are different, like our V2. Our uh, uh, V2 Tour, V2 Tour counter balance, really has a, a longer parallel butt. So when you look at the mandrel, the, the, this section of the mandrel will be just really 600 butt all the way for about 13 inches, and then it will taper from that standpoint. So what that does is creates a different profile. So when people look at measurements of golf shafts, they're like, oh yeah, it's the same butt stiffness, uh, so it's gonna feel a little similar. In reality, it's really the geometry of the shaft that dictates how it's gonna feel. V2 is gonna feel a lot stiffer because the longer parallel butt section, even though it will frequency out or the CPM be a lot lower than let's say what you're used to, let's just say like a 275, it might frequency out to 260, but it's gonna feel just as stiff as the 275. So once we get the mandrel materials, and then our technician will start rolling really here, uh, get it putting it together, and then going through the process of getting it from the mandrel materials onto the golf shaft, rolling it, and then pretty much once it's done, you'll get a golf shaft that, that we can put into the oven. But the main thing is they have to put this in cellophane. Cellophane will tighten the structure up, and then we put it into the oven. And once it comes in the oven, uh, then we take it out, and then we go do the finishing process. Uh, so once the, the golf shaft is rolled and we have it to where we can do the finishing process. We come in here into our paint room. And really, the, the goal here is to either get a product for a uh, finished product for the OEM, finished product for tour, or finished custom products for the customer. So we come in here and we have really a variety of methods that we utilize. Uh, the simplest form is actually. If you look at this right here, it's a silk screen. It's like making a t-shirt, really, at the end of the day. So we can uh, come up with intricate designs and put it onto the screen here, and then put the paint accordingly, whatever color we want, uh, combination. So if, if a customer wants you know, specific, hey, I want this five different colors, we can do it on this machine. Uh, but with five colors, it takes a lot longer because each time we put a print color, then we have to put it in the oven, let it cure, put the next print, oven, cure, and so forth. So it takes a longer process. Now a simpler process is actually what we call a, a heat transfer or decal machine. Uh, so we have this decal machine here that we order. It's essentially a big sticker, right? You put it on, uh, you put the golf shaft on here, heat pad, and there's a, 
the decal that puts on there and then rolls it onto the golf shaft. So it gives you the graphics in one step and then we can finish it and it'd be a lot faster. Uh, so less labor intensive. Uh, and also it's a little bit better details with decals, uh, but both methods are easy to do. It's just a matter of which one we choose to do from a production standpoint. Uh, so those are really the couple of methods to get the, uh, the, the look of the shaft in terms of the graphics. In terms of the finishing of the shaft, the, the actual color of the golf shaft, whether you know, a golf shaft comes out, we sand it and it's just a black shaft. So now we need a color, whether it's white, black, blue, uh, come in here. And we have all these different types of paints that we're, we're utilizing to get the color that we're after. Uh, this is real simple. Everyone does this. Uh, if you look at this right here, it's what we call a squeegee method. And it's just the paint in there. Right now, this is actually a purple paint. Uh, the technician uh, will actually just put the golf shaft in there and pull it. And it gives it the color that we're, we're going after. Now, so certain colors are tougher than others because you think about the tube, it's, it's actually a black tube. So when you make a, for example, a yellow shaft, a certain yellow, you can't just put the yellow on there. You have to put certain colors on there, whether it's a white on the, onto the shaft and then the yellow. Uh, so there's different color combinations that the technician will figure out how to make that golf shaft in the marketplace. So after we finished all the golf shafts, um, this is really back in the day where we used to actually do production out of here. We'll put it into inventory. So you see, we have literally thousands, upon thousands of golf shafts here uh, for you know the aftermarket partners, for customers and stuff like that we can pull and test. So ton of different shafts, everything you can think of in terms of recalls to Core Force V2 to Elements Platinum and all the different products out there.